Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In the following video, we'll learn how to take any video, video input, or video signal, and turn it into a pseudo point cloud, a very simple technique to achieve now that we have the new family of operators called POPs. What matters most to me is that you learn to use the top to pop, which finally allows us to convert images into points in a very simple way, meaning coordinates that we can later manipulate in many different ways, as you'll see in a moment. With that said, let's do a quick review of what we'll cover. Chapter 1, Overview. In the first section, which I've called Main Network, we'll use a simple top to pop to convert the pixels of the video into points, which we can then move across the three axes. In other words, we'll transform a 2D universe into a 3D one. In this same section, we'll also create some new attributes that we'll later use, along with a noise and a copy pop. The next section, focused on rendering, will be covered in more detail this time. Normally, I don't explain rendering because there are many tutorials about it, but since this is a short tutorial, we'll go through it, as well as the final post-process section, so we can build the entire network from scratch. All right, with that overview done, let's jump into the actual tutorial. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okami Rufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school, where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter 2 Network. Let's start by creating a movie file. In. Choose a video that you find interesting. I'm currently working with footage of ocean currents, tides, or waves, because they already have a natural movement that fits well with this technique. In the output resolution, I must lower the video resolution. Since I'm recording this tutorial, my frame rate could drop too much otherwise. You can adjust the output resolution depending on the maximum your computer can handle without losing too many frames. Perfect. After this, create a level to finally adjust contrast, brightness, and gamma. You can test these later. Now, right-click on the level top and search for a top to pop. This operator transforms the values from texture operators, known as TOPS, into the world of POPS. Leave all parameters at their default values. All we want for now is to convert the video into points. If you zoom in on the new operator, you'll notice that the video is now made of tiny points representing each pixel. Now duplicate the same operator and choose a different conversion type, the one called height in the next menu. This conversion lets us automatically displace the pixels along the Z axis according to their red color values. As you can see, the video now has a natural displacement thanks to the differences in each pixel's color values. Essentially, the operator assigns a specific displacement value based on the red channel of each pixel, which is why we can now see a mesh with some depth. Next, connect both operators to an attribute combine. If you don't have an extra input, create one. In the first input attribute, select color, and in the second, P for points. This ensures that the color information from the mesh is inherited by each point. Already, this gives us a very interesting result. Now let's make it even more dynamic by creating some attributes using the random operator. Create the first random. Leave random size and parameter size at 1. Set value A to 0 0.5 and value B to 1. If you want to understand this operator more deeply, I recommend visiting my school community. It includes both beginner courses and a large community where we review concepts, exclusive tutorials, and much more touch designer content. Now in your output, create a new attribute called scale. Then create another random, but this time set random size and parameter size to three. 
Since we want to create an attribute for rotation across the three axes, x, y, z, change value b to 360 so that each particle rotates randomly up to 360 degrees. This helps bring a sense of dynamism to the system, and you can always adjust these values depending on your video and the results you want to achieve. Rename this output rotation. Perfect. Next, create a noise operator. This will let us apply noise to the entire mesh, adding more depth overall. You can copy the same parameters I'm using, but remember, this is an area full of creative possibilities to explore later. Don't forget to animate the noise using the classic expression abs time dot seconds. Now create a box and make it very small. For example, 0 0.008. Right click on the box's output and create a copy pop. Connect the noise to the second input. In short, what we want here is to use the noise positions but apply to tiny boxes so that our particles have more presence, especially when we later add lights and shadows. In the copy pop under the template section, enable template rotate and template scale. For each, select the attributes we created earlier, rotation and scale. Then under the attributes section, enable use template point attributes. In operation, Select Copy and under Names, choose Color so we can keep the video's original color consistency on each particle. Now, create a Select Pop to organize the network. Drag the output of the copy directly into it and then connect the Select to a Geo component. Add a camera, a light, and a render top. Change the render top resolution to vertical. And adjust the camera position until you find a composition you like. As you'll notice, the composition still feels somewhat flat, so we'll reposition the light and modify some parameters. Before that, though, let's visualize the render on the screen to the right so we can better see the changes. I like to create a select at the end and drag the render or any other operator. I want to monitor there. You can also directly set a black background in the render top to see the result more clearly. Now back to the lighting. First, change the light type to distant light and increase the dimmer to three. Keep the color white and enable soft shadows for much greater depth in the composition. Finally, take your time adjusting the light's position until you find the best result. Of course, you can always keep experimenting. To finish this project, let's add a subtle feedback effect to the texture and finalize it with a Luma Blur. Connect a feedback, then a level and end with an over. Now connect the render to the over and drag the over into the feedback. You'll see everything looks frozen at first. Go to the level and in the post section, lower the opacity until you find an interesting balance. Perfect. Now to finish, create a Luma Blur. Connect a ramp to its second input. Make sure the ramp matches the vertical resolution we're working with. If you want, move the second keyframe to the center and adjust the Luma Blur values. I'll use 15 and 1 which will blur the edges of the composition while keeping the center sharp. And that's it. We've completed another tutorial.
Remember, you can use the camera to change particle positions or create additional lights to give your composition new moods. You can also experiment with different videos and tweak the noise values to achieve unique results. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget